All right, the Lee Enfield. All right. Alex has had these out at the range a couple of times. I'm not sure if I ever got to shoot this one, so. Well, you've had it out. I think you might have put a couple rounds through it. Maybe. Uh, anyways, this is a uh, number four Mark I Star. Um, a couple features identified as that, uh, it, you know, the, the um, sights and the action identified as a World War II rifle. Um, the star simplified the bolt release a little bit, oh, okay. um, you know, make things a little cheaper. Uh, it also didn't have the magazine cut off and so on and so forth. Actually, that might have been the number one Mark III, but there's, there's, there's a lot of infield variants and they rattle around up here. Um, huh. But uh, these are, unlike the other two bolt action rifles, this one is very different. Uh, it features a 10 round magazine. Now it's important to note, these were detachable, um, but you would get in a lot of trouble for taking this out. For your purposes, this is not detachable. The guys didn't carry a bandolier of these. They carried a bandolier of stripper clips and fed those into it instead of so is that you, magazines. So you're worried of getting dirt and stuff in the action? It, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's this whole, of course, World War II, you started to see the use of magazine, you know, detachable magazine fed rifles and submachine guns. But, um, you know, the fear was is that the average infantryman would lose that stuff. I oh. mean, you know, the British military were very well trained for the most part during World War II, so were, so were the Americans. But a lot of these armies, you know, were, were, were basically, you know, were conscript armies. I mean, they'd, they'd pull you off the farm, you, 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 you get a little five minute lecture about the rifle, and then you go out there and be asked to kill the Hun. Um, you know, so uh, the, they were, that's why the Garand had, had the, the internal magazine as well. Um, uh -huh. You know, okay. early in development, they had, they had pushed for a removable magazine and, and, and carrying multiple magazines. But, um, <clears throat> so, as far as using this one, uh, bolt action as well. This one's a cock on close. Um, okay. The Mauser's a clock on, the cock on open, so mm -hmm. is the Mosin. So you feel the resistance when you actually open the bolt. It's cocking your striker back, loading the spring tension on the bolt. So this one doesn't load until you push forward. You feel resistance right, right okay. there. And you, you have to push forward, close the bolt, and if you don't drop the striker, if you don't fire the gun, when, when you lift the bolt, it's gonna spring back. Because okay. the only thing, you know, your, your trigger's holding the, the cocking piece back right. now. Uh, this one has a stripper clip guide. It is loaded by stripper clips. It's not a 10 round clip. It is um, two, two five round clips. Okay. Um, so you'll put it in, push down, take it out, grab the next one, put it in, push down, close your bolt. Okay. And you know, I've got to manually remove these stripper clips. You do have to manually remove these. Okay. Um, maybe not the last one, but the first one, definitely. Okay. Um, your safety's here, similar to the Mauser safety. When it's back, it prevents the gun from firing and locks the action. Okay. When it's in the forward position, the action is free to cycle okay. and your, your gun will fire. Okay. Um, these were considered to be the fastest bolt action in World War II, and part of that is that cock on close action. So I'm going to do it right handed because that really shows it. So when, you're, when you eject your last round, push your next one, as soon as your bolt's down, you're in your firing position, you can go ahead and. I mean, and the, the mad minute involved the guys you know, where that came from. A lot of times they weren't even pulling the trigger with their trigger finger. They keep their hand on the bolt. Oh God. And you know, these British soldiers could fire 40 or 50 aimed shots in a minute. That's not. I mean, I think the world record is, is, is like close to 50 aimed rounds within Man. a minute. So you get 10 or 15 of these guys and feel like you're being hit by machine guns. <laughs> but, uh, so think you're ready on this one? No, but let's do it anyway. All right. This one is peep sights, by the way. Okay. So, so you may find that a little easier to, down. to make your hits with. Oh. Ready? Uh, no, but let's do it anyway. Remember, they're shooting at you.
so the action on that rifle is very smooth. Um, the sights are 101.69 this time. Yeah, that was uh, it was about three seconds slower than last time. Well, so not too bad, but I hit less. Yeah. Um, it, it was harder to get a bead on the bottles because the, the sights on this rifle are really wide open. Obviously, uh, something you've got to really practice with to figure out where where the front post needs to be in the rear sight. Um, when the rifle comes up, I'm actually, the first thing I'm seeing are the, the guides on <laughs> the either side of the post. Huge ears. But, yeah. but you're... You're not going to break that front sight, though. No, that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, let's go down and see how I hit. <coughs> Just low. That 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 may very well be the rifle. You know, again, that 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 battlefield zero. Yeah. Maybe what it is. But uh, I could a dead turkey. The sight picture, like I said, was. Ooh, look at this. So that's way tighter than your Mauser. Just low. Oh, yeah. Although, I missed the if head. you were hitting low, you should have hit the head. Low and center, you should have hit the head. Yeah. But, well, it could have been tiring out too. Yeah, that's true. They are they are heavy guns. That's yeah. that's not to be that's not and, to be overlooked. And this was heavier than the Mauser. Yeah, definitely. Nowhere near him. Nailed the second bottle though. He's uh, I mean center punch. Dead center. Sucked in the top. Yeah, here we go. This is one dead Jerry. Yeah. So the, uh, for some reason, when I when I fired the rifle, the striker only jumped forward about a quarter of an inch. The bolt was locked. I couldn't cycle the action, so I grabbed the striker, pulled it back to the lock position, and fired again. And that time it did fire the cartridge. Yeah. Cool. That's well, that's one nice thing about an external extractor uh, striker like that is you can yeah that's you can unique... pull it back in an emergency. Yep. Um, can you do that with the Mosin? Huh? Can you do that with the Mosin? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, can. Yep. All right, let's go see the hits. Well, you got two good center mass hits here. I missed the head on that one. It looks like it. Yep. And of course, you nailed the bottle here. Uh -huh. Okay, center mass. Oop. Part of his hair. Yeah. And you, uh, you hit the bottle to, you the second the, time. Yeah. I missed it the first time rather than taking the headshot. I went back and hit the bottle. Because the bottle's a lot more fun. Yeah. The, the two two good fun. center mass hits there, though.